apologize for an ability to participate physically in this conference. I'm very much interested about the topic and uh, I found so many exciting presentation topics in the agenda of this conference. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm working uh, at Natural Resource Institute Finland and uh, uh, I'm working nowadays mostly on utilization of digital tools or digital solutions for forestry operations. And as a forest owner, I'm, of course, very much motivated to find new solutions uh, which will be working in reality. And in other words, to convert the uh, digitalization into the value for forest owners. And today I would like to present some first results on our ongoing project where we were working with our colleagues on uh, utilizing drone based laser scanning for pre-planning and then also post-harvesting evaluation of some test sites, uh, which we are used for continuous cover forestry. And uh, uh, today we had already nice discussions about continuous cover forestry, but just to remember uh, the key limitations uh, of uh, conventional even age rotation forestry comparing to continuous cover forestry, which, is, which are usually very often discussed by public are uh, biodiversity loss, so carbon emissions after the clear cuts and then slow sequestration after the planting. For owners, there is also less discussed issue of liquidity problem. So it means how often you could get uh, income from the forest. But then there are also regeneration costs. So if you run conventional even age rotation forestry, very often you need to go for uh, artificial regeneration means buying seedlings or and then planting those seedlings. So in Finland, continuous cover forestry very often discussed as a silviculture alternative. If co of course, it's not suitable for everywhere. So there are certain forest types which could be uh, could provide uh, 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 additional value if to be converted into continuous cover forestry. And uh, uh, if in my recent research, I was concentrating on how to use uh, drones and different uh, remote sensing tools to uh, uh, in forestry operations and for for example we found recently that the drones offer a really viable method for evaluation of forest regeneration to, uh, during the conference there were also one very interesting presentation about experience in Norway we were also having similar experience and we developed actually so-called two-stage drone flight patterns to be able to get uh, extremely high resolution images, uh, we are talking about two millimeter per pixel from a, a traditional drone. We also worked in our research projects on uh, how we could improve uh, the uh, harvesting positioning. And we found that the precision of harvested geolocation could be actually enhanced through the integration of remote sensing data. And some of those results were presented already during this conference. But the, those results were providing for me really uh, high motivation, like there are some opportunities, like how we could utilize those opportunities to, uh, Im to improve operations within a continuous cover forestry model. So the main topic what I wanted to address in this study was how digitalization could enhance economic efficiency of continuous cover forestry in Finland. In other words, how we convert those nicely fancy devices like drones, artificial intelligence, point clouds in, into the value for a forest owner. Uh, for this purpose, we established a study area, and I think today this study area was already presented in a uh, presentation of my colleague by Uriu Nutin and about uh, the results, so I will not go into details about uh, different, uh, let's say, methods, but uh, uh, this area was established uh, near Joensu, and uh, uh, within this study area, what we did, we actually first we scanned the area before, uh, thinning operations on continuous cover forestry model, and then after thinning operations. For this scanning, uh, we use uh, uh, Velodyne VLP16 sensor, and then we, and we mounted this sensor in two ways. Like first we mounted on the matrix drone, which could cover in one flight roughly about 50 hectares. And then we also mounted on a car and Munkia and backpack to collect also the so-called ground data. But in this in this presentation, I would like to concentrate on first results from uh, from drone-based scanning. 
And additionally, we, we are using uh, uh, quite traditional Mavic to pro drone, but what we did, we did some modification of this drone. So meaning that what we did, we installed precise GNSS device on, uh, on this drone. So when this drone was flying, uh, uh, not in the vertical mode, but it's in post-processing mode, we were able to collect very precise coordinates of the locations from where the pictures were taken. So the same setup we organized also for a, uh, for a uh, uh, laser scanner installed on the drone. But additionally to the laser scanner installed on the drone, there were also EMU device installed uh, on the drone. So in other words, when we were scanning the area, we were able to georeference with very, very high accuracy the position of, uh, uh, of the trajectory of the laser scanning, and then also the position of every image which was taken by the drone. So to be able to make this uh, rectification, we had a base station nearby, which was uh, simultaneously collecting the data. And this base station was connecting to the uh, National Land Survey network of the base stations in Finland. We, uh, based on this data, we, uh, then what we did, we processed the um, point cloud data. So with quite traditional uh, way of processing, uh, we tested different parameters, but practically the processing, we are starting with, uh, uh, with uh, point cloud segmentation. So we have got quite dense point cloud. And in order to get re really dense point cloud, we actually programmed our drone to fly very, very slowly so that uh, 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 laser scanner would be capable to capture a lot of data. And also we were flying a drone from a, a quite low altitude, relatively low altitude. We are talking about 50 meters above ground. And uh, uh, as a result, we've got quite high point density, so over 200 points per square meter. And uh, uh, in order to find the trees in this point cloud, we first uh, segmented the point cloud. We tested different methods uh, for segmentation and the best, uh, the best results were, come, were achieved when we used layer stack segmentation method. Then once the trees were segmented, we estimated parameters like uh, using a classical approach, like uh, by point cloud classification, we calculated the height of the, of the trees and the accuracy was very high about, uh, 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 the accuracy was varying from three to five centimeters. Then we uh, uh, calculated the crown diameters, crown area, and then crown volume from, from the point cloud data. Uh, for, because we were flying so low, and because we were flying so slow, we were able even to, to estimate the diameter from some of the trees, not all the trees, but only, only some fraction of the trees, about 20%. And uh, uh, this diameter estimation we were able to achieve by fitting circle at 1.3 meter above the ground. And then if there were number of points where more than eight points per, per stem, we were uh, considering this uh, diameter as a, a Kind of, we were able to estimate this diameter. Then we did also accuracy assessment. So we established a ground co control points, we established plots, and we also did some measurements uh, uh, manually on the point cloud in order to check how accurate the methods are working in, in reality. So this is how collected data look like. So before the thinning, so you can see the orthophoto, and then you can see the uh, uh, lighter point cloud over the study area. And uh, it's very important also to mention why those methods could, could have a potential in the future, because we could estimate quite many parameters, of course, with certain degree of error, but within a relatively short period of time. For example, if we talk about time consumption, we, uh, uh, we spent about one hour to uh, totally for processing, for, for uh, data acquisition and processing. So it means about 30 minutes for flight and then about 30 minutes for data processing. I mean, in case when you know all the algorithms and you know all the parameters. So it's quite, a, uh, from this point of view, it's quite efficient way of collecting the forest data.